Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So today we're going to get another fun and exciting episode for you guys this Friday because for the longest time you've been asking for a game room tour of my collection. But here's the thing, I don't actually have a game room. 90% of my collection is behind cabinets and closets and doors because while I love collecting hardware and software, I don't really display it. Yes, I've got my studio, but that's usually a mess of wires and cables for my channel and for my actual film practice. But the number one requested thing I've been getting is to talk about my Neo Geo collection because I've been collecting for a very long time. So I figured that's what we would do today. Before we get to find Valve though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But I love Neo Geo, I love collecting AES games, and that is where my collection lies. I don't have a single MVS game in my collection, nor do I actually have an MVS motherboard. Strange for me, because if you know the channel, you know I love collecting arcade hardware, but I definitely stick to the AES side of things. Now, I have not recently made this collection. This Neo Geo right here, I I purchased this in 2005. That is when I started collecting Neo Geo games. This has been the console I've had the entire time. It is lightly modified, but definitely in a 2005 manner, not in a 2023 manner. But I remember being a kid and playing the ever-loving hell out of Neo Geo in the arcades, and I did know that it did exist as a home console variant, but pretty much no one I knew back in the day ever had one. I don't even know if they were on sale in Vermont. But this original Neo Geo that I've had since 2005 is where I play my games. It is modded for S video and composite and has absolute garbage RGB out because it has never been modified to fix that. I still love it. It's where I got my start and I'm never going to get rid of the console. But let's talk about some full sets right now. I do collect certain specific genres of Neo Geo and some they just basically ignore completely. But I do have an entire full set of the King of Fighters from 1994 all the way to 2003 and this took me about 12 to 13 years to complete. Now, King of Fighters 2002 here in an English variant copy was the first Neo Geo game I ever purchased and I bought it before I even had a Neo Geo console. I got this from the Neo Geo forum store back in 2005 and then I bought the console about a month later so I was actually able to play the game. But this is where I got my start. An English copy of King of Fighters 2002. It's been in my collection ever since. And at this point in time, I've had it for about 18 years. This is old enough to go to college. It's old enough to buy a pack of cigarettes in most states. And I've barely even played the damn thing because the case and snap lock are still super smooth and tight. And it is the only King of Fighters game I have for Neo Geo in the English language variant. And that's because when I bought it, it was only like $25 more to get the US copy versus the Japanese copy. And that was definitely a wise investing move because it's worth a lot more now. Pretty much any Neo Geo game in the US variant is going to be worth more, but I'm never going to sell these things so it doesn't really matter, but you do get a full manual in English and it is in color for 2002. But this is where I got my start. I even still have the little sandwich cellophane baggie here that all of the manuals came in. This is considered something you need to have if you want to have the game complete. But this is where I got started loving the Neo Geo as far as the AES was concerned. I never actually saw 2002 in arcades and I figured that would be a good place to start buying software for the platform because I never actually played it before. And I will say 2002 is one of my favorite King of Fighters games ever of all time. 98 is an awesome one as well and I know that's considered to be the better one as far as Neo Geo games are concerned. But this is where I got my start and I only owned one game for the Neo Geo for like the first 6 or 7 months. So you know I played the ever loving hell out of of it because I didn't have a second game to play and it's not like a lot of used game stores existed in Vermont back in 2005 that were selling Neo Geo games. Now the last game I got in my full set for the King of Fighters is funny enough 2003. I started with 2002 and it took me about 12 years to finally finish the set. I got this maybe 7 or 8 years ago from another collector in Germany. It is in perfect condition. I swear this has never actually been played. There are no insertion marks on the cart even though they said they played it. And the cellophane bag that this manual comes in barely even looks like it's been opened before. It is highly likely this manual has never actually seen open air as far as summing through it is concerned. So it is is a lot of fun to have. Now the first game in the entire run is King of Fighters 94 and it is the only game in the entire franchise that comes in the softbox and we will talk a little bit more about that but this is where the King of Fighters got started and if you do want to click for AES today it's going to be very expensive but 94 is still going to be the cheapest one but I've got 95, I've got 96. We're going to go through the entire run and this is just because I love this franchise so much. There's definitely not any quote unquote horrible games in the entire collection although I would say 2001 
ones definitely agreed upon as being the weakest, with 98 being agreed upon to be the absolute best as far as AES games are concerned. And it's wild to think that the King of Fighters still exists now. This started back in 1994, and we just recently got a new King of Fighters game, and I hope that this franchise stays in existence for another 10 to 20 years. Now, King of Fighters 2000, they decided to be cute with it, and they put the artwork off to the side. It doesn't look correct, but it is fun to look at. 2001 was when Neo Geo and SNK were having some issues, and that was made by another company, and it does have some very weird art style. And of course, you've already seen 2002, where I got my start, and we just have to close it off with 2003. But that's the entirety of my King of Fighters collection for Neo Geo AES. I've got the entire full set from 94 to 2003, and just to take a quick look, this isn't Neo Geo CD related, but I do have a couple King of Fighters on Neo Geo CD as well. And if you want to see a collection tour of my Neo Geo CD stuff, leave me a comment down below if this video does well I'll probably do this for other hardware in my collection but again it's so much fun just to see King of Fighters 2002 with the artwork facing sideways definitely not the best cover art for any King of Fighters game and it is weird that they went with that landscape mode there but it happens now as far as my favorite game is concerned that's 100% match or melee every day of the week and twice on Sunday I'm not saying this is the best fighting game on the AES, I'm saying it's my favorite and it has so much charm and personality, I will never part with this game. And funny story, when I purchased this from a private collector, I paid via PayPal and it threw a security alert up on my bank account because they thought it was a suspicious charge. It took me four days to actually get the transaction to go through and I lost the entire access to my bank account because Chase Manhattan Bank put a hold on it. I basically had to just depend on the cash I had sitting around my house until my bank card actually started working. And I 1000% say that was worth it and now the bank has gotten much more used to my spending habits as far as games are concerned. But if you've never played Matter Melee before, I can't recommend you check it out enough. I definitely would not buy an AES copy because I didn't pay all that much for this and it has gone wildly up in price in intervening years, but I'll never sell it. It's never leaving my collection. Now as far as semi sets are concerned, I have Samurai Shodan or Samurai Spirits 1 through 4, but I do not have any other game beyond that. And that's just because I didn't buy them early enough. They've gotten very expensive and I I don't love the games enough to add them to my collection. I do not buy anything for the Neo Geo that I don't love and think that the value for the money is there, but you can get a copy of Samurai Spirits 2 or the original game still relatively cheaply for AES. So if you want to get into something like this, this is a great place to start, but just be aware any of the most popular games that aren't some of the Samurai Showdown games are going to be quite expensive. We're talking in the multiple excess of thousands and in some instances into the five digits, but I do love the original Samurai Spirits. Back when games came in soft cases and had the taller manual variant here. They went to more of a jewel case design in the future, but if you do want to collect soft boxes, you got to be very tolerant to the condition. I've got a lot of nice condition ones, but I've got some that are also completely cracked, and they did move over to the snap lock case later on, but these little soft box inserts right here, 9 times out of 10, they're going to be broken up and you just have to deal with it. But I absolutely love the label art on some of these games as well. Samurai Spirits here, the actual label is so colorful and so unique, you can't help but love what you look at when you put the game in the AES. And that's a lot about what makes the Neo Geo so special. The games are expensive, but you get so much for your money, including this massive quaff of hair right here. But even in the manuals, the ones that are older and always in black and white, there is so much fun art to take a look at. When you buy a Neo Geo AES game, you spend a lot of money, but you feel like you're holding something substantial in your hand, and that is a lot of the reason why I loved collecting for it. It is fun on the shelf, it's fun to put into the AES and play, you really feel like you're having a good time. And you'll see on some of the games on all of them, SNK got away from this, they will give you a genre. This is Katana Battle Action Game. And if I show you Fatal Fury Special, it's going to be real battle action games. Some of these games have genres and they don't make much sense, but just be aware that that was something they did for some years and not others. And speaking of the Fatal Fury series, I do not have a full set of this either. I've got Special, 3, Real Bout, Real Bout Special, Real Bout 2, and Garu Mark of the Wolves. And that is a fun set to have. Honestly, I need to add 2 and 1 to my collection. They're really not that expensive, and sometimes even I forget that I should pick a certain game up. But obviously the one that everyone loves and remembers is Mark of the Wolves, and I will say that this is functionally the best fighting game on the Neo Geo AES or MVS. If you've somehow never played this game before, you have to play it however you possibly can. I do not recommend trying to buy an original copy of this game, or else you better bring your wallet, your friend's wallet, and your father's wallet too, because you're going to need to have an absolute crap ton of money. Again, I've owned this game for over a decade. It was much, much cheaper back when I picked it up, but it's just one of those games that is so much fun. But taking a look at Fatal Fury special here that is not John Candy although I always think it is I've got special and I've got three as well and that's when they switched over to the softbox 
to the snap lock case. And this has been sitting on my shelf next to my Neo Geo. Definitely need to dust a little bit more. It drives you guys nuts that things are dusty, but I don't really care that much. Then we have Real Bout, which is a sub-series of Fatal Fury. We have Real Bout, and then we move over to Real Bout Fatal Fury Special, which is my favorite of the Real Bout series. And then we had one more game in the collection after that, which I'll show you in just a moment. But Real Bout Fatal Fury Special is pretty much everything about Fatal Fury, just done in a slightly different and more modern manner. It 100% hits 100% of the time, and I definitely recommend you check it out. And this one here, Real Bout 2, I actually bought this from a pawn shop in Chicago. They had had two Neo Geo games sitting on the shelf. I paid $200 for it. Best deal I ever got, and yes, it is authentic. But of course, Mark of the Wolves is the crown jewel of any Neo Geo collection as far as fighting games are concerned. I picked this up from Japan, like I said, a little bit over a decade ago. I've opened it up, I've confirmed it's authentic, and that is something you need to do when you collect these games. If you do not know about Neo Geo and you don't know what to look for, do not start spending a lot of money on this hardware and software. You can and will get completely burned, ending up spending multiple thousands of dollars on what amounts to a bootleg or conversion. But if we take a look at the Mark of the Wolves manual, even though this was a later release, SNK did get away from color manuals and started going just to black and white. But this thing is near mint. I still thumb through it and touch it because it's meant to be played, not collected. And it comes with the original registration card. One of the few games in my collection that still has that reg card. And none of the games that I have have any of the phone cards that they released back in the day. Now I have Art of Fighting and Art of Fighting 2, but I do not have Art of Fighting 3. That is a very expensive game and I would love to add it to my collection, but again, I don't know if I love it enough to do something like that. Now moving into English language games or US region games, I have two outside of King of Fighters 2002. Blue's Journey, a fun platforming game, and then I also have one shmup. Alpha Mission 2, also known as ASO2 in other regions. I bought this new old stock probably in like 2007 or so, and I paid like $40 for it. It has gone way up in value, and while some of these US region games have some absolutely ugly artwork on the box, it is fun to have a US region game and to see the English language on the back of the artwork. But again, unless you're a big collector, don't start buying English games, they're expensive. Now on the one off front, I have the Last Blade, but I don't have the Last Blade 2, and I did a review on this last year, but again, it's one of the best 2D fighting games ever made in my opinion, and the sequel does just as good of a job, but it's just not in my collection. But I think that this is SNK at the height of their ability to make 2D sprites and 2D backgrounds just absolutely look beautiful. This is the type of game that I love, and I definitely want to get the sequel one day. Now, I also have SVC Chaos, and this is definitely a game that I was really looking forward to when it was announced, and I bought a new copy from the Neo store online, I think in like 2006 or so. I had never played it. I had heard it was good, but not great, and it definitely is exactly that. It is not a perfect game. It is definitely a B-tier effort, and so many people expected so many lofty goals from SNK, including Capcom, in one of their games. And while it's not the best game of all time, it's not as bad as most people think. It is flawed for sure, but it is a lot of fun. And of course, it wouldn't be any sort of collection if you didn't have at least one sports game in the mix. So of course, I've got at least one sports game. Now moving over to other types of games, we have new games. Xeno Crisis here was made by Bitmap Bureau and it is an awesome modern Neo Geo game and it's the only modern game I actually have in my collection. Now if we talk about MVS to AES conversions, I also have Neo Bomberman. This never came out on AES. It is technically an MVS bootleg put over to AES but I love it in my collection all the same. And I do have one AES bootleg although this was sold exactly as being a reproduction. This uses new boards but this would be considered an AES bootleg to most people that collect but those are the three games that aren't genuine in my collection but you guys kept asking for a game room tour and I just don't have a game room so I figured I'd start showing you some collection tours and I wanted to start with my favorite console of all time the Neo Geo and I actually also own World Heroes Perfect and I totally forgot to take it out of my office and put it on camera so that one should be included as well but tell me down below do you collect Neo Geo do you plan on doing it in the future do you just love watching these videos sure that I'll see you guys next time Bye-bye.